Um, I can just shop, shop around sometimes. Sure. Okay, well, I'll come back and forth. You've got the clicker. I've got the mic. Round of applause. Dennis from the All right. I'm sure we've all had to deal with an angry user before, so I'm just going to dive right in for the purpose of saving time. When dealing with a combative user, the first thing we have to do is understand the angry user's mindset. Instead of getting defensive, if they yell at us, or just ignoring their anger altogether, we have to try to figure out why they feel justified to be angry at us in the first place. And to do that, we start by making an important distinction. So I like to separate angry users into two levels of anger. Level one, the user is frustrated but still looking for a solution. They just want their problem fixed. And if we give them that fix, their anger will disappear. However, if their problem does not get fixed in a timely manner, according to them, then they escalate to level two. And once they get to level two, the user is beyond wanting a solution. Now, they want someone to blame. With the level two angry user, just offering them a solution may not actually be enough. And here's why. This user sees us as the enemy. We are the source of their problem. And this is when they get in bad. So basically, we're trying to help the user, but for whatever reason, the user thinks we are unable or unwilling to help. Maybe they had a bad interaction with us in the past, maybe we really messed up, or maybe they're just kind of short-tempered and a little bit entitled. Whatever the reason, when they get to this mindset, they will resist every effort we make to try to find a solution for them because they don't trust us. So, before we can start finding a solution for them, we have to get them to this mindset. We're trying to help the user, and the user <coughs> understands that we are here to help. And in fact, if we don't change their mindset first, if we ignore their anger and just focus on finding a solution for them, we may actually make them even angrier. And here's why. So let's say you are really upset at somebody. You're mad at somebody for something that you believe they did to you on purpose. It may not be true, but it's what you believe. Now, going with this premise, what's the worst thing this person you're angry at can do to you? The thing that will piss you off more than anything else. Get defensive, fight back? Not necessarily. Now, obviously, devolving into an argument is totally unproductive. At the same time, ironically, if they fight back, then they're acknowledging your anger. And on some level, that feels satisfying. Because when you're really, really upset at someone, what you want, first and foremost from them, is validation of your feelings. So the worst thing they can do to you is ignore your feelings and keep talking to you like nothing is wrong. It just feels dismissive. And that's what we have to keep in mind. The angry user does not need a solution at that moment. They need empathy. They need someone to, oh, they need someone to acknowledge how angry they are. And that's why when the user gets combative, before we can worry about finding a solution for them, we have to validate their feelings and change their mindset. Plus, there's a, a second reason that we need to create empathy. The reality is we can't always give the user the perfect solution they want. Sometimes what they're asking for is just not possible. Other times they ask these rhetorical questions that really can't answer. You know, questions like, why is your software so hard to use? I don't know, because you're kind of slow. <laughs> or, or my favorite, why is nobody visiting my blog? Well, your writing really sucks. <laughs> Point being, we can't always give the user the answer they want. All we can do is offer them an alternative. And this is when empathy becomes vital again. If the user believes we're trying to screw them over, an alternative solution is proof that we won't give them what they want. On the other hand, if the user believes we're trying to help, then an alternative solution means that we care enough about them to offer them something else. It's a two-way street. 
if we offer them empathy and show them that we understand their anger, that makes it much more likely that they will empathize with us and understand when we can't give them the perfect solution they're looking for. Empathy makes the user much more willing to compromise. And frequently, we need those compromises. So, this takes us now to the million dollar question. How do we create empathy? Personally, there's more miles for you. Just you wait, there's more. Personally, I think the most important part is just to understand the angry user's mindset. Empathy is a state of mind. It's not a checklist of steps that we can follow. It's kind of zen-like, if you think about it. But having said that, if we were to break it down into a series of steps, that takes us now to our next section. Before we get into this section, though, there are two very important rules on dealing with angry users that I want to go over. So here you go. Rule number one, no canned wines. There are a ton of customer service books out there, and they're generally decent. However, many of them will also take complex human interactions and distill them to be simple catch-all phrases and solutions. So when they give us examples of lines that we can say to make users happy, we have to take them with a very large grain of salt. All right, some of you are already laughing at these. If you look at these lines, I'm sure these are all lines that you've heard from a customer support rep at some point in your life. And that means an angry user talking to you has probably heard these same lines too. They're kind of like the customer service equivalent of a cheesy pickup line. If you use them, the user is immediately going to, immediately going to be turned off. You're going to think we're just reading off the script to appease them. They will not buy it. So, rule number one, no canned lines. Rule number two, we have to assert ourselves in a respectful way that doesn't attack the user. Now, in just a minute, I'm going to show you a transcript from the actual chat that I had with an angry user. And as I go through the transcript, some of you may feel a little bit squeamish with some of the, let's say, more blunt comments that I'm going to be saying. Uh, they're kind of like if you remember Robert's email from, that, uh, from his talk, kind of like that. But keep in mind, if our goal is to build rapport and connect to someone, that also entails us asserting ourselves when necessary. We don't connect to another person by just being a complete pushover. All that does is empower them to become even more aggressive and take advantage of us. We have to stick up for ourselves. We just have to stick up for ourselves in a respectful manner. So that's rule number two. Okay, let's talk about some techniques now. The first thing we're going to do is we have to figure out whether the user is at level one or level two. And this is what I like to do. Start off by focusing on solutions. That's our goal, after all. If they become verbally abusive, explain that the comments are inappropriate, <coughs> then let it go and continue working on solutions. If the verbal abuse continues or if they resist our help, Make it clear that their behavior is hindering our ability to find a solution for them. Okay, so now let's take a look at that example chat and I'll tell you my thought process as we're going through the conversation and you'll get an idea of how I can apply these techniques. All right, here we go. This is the, the user now. LOL, whoever just answered my question didn't help at all whatsoever. Okay, I'm gonna keep it friendly. Hi there. They couldn't figure it out so they ended chat. Tell Blank that he's a fucking moron. All right. It's not going well. Going well. <laughs> so I decided I need to assert myself right away because of the cursing and this personal attack. But I keep it pretty curt. We are, here to, we are happy to help you, but we will not tolerate abusive language. If you want our continued help, I'm going to ask you to be respectful. And this is what he says. Sorry, just tell him he's horrible. <laughs> Right? But he still has this personal grudge against the last support guy, who, by the way, didn't do anything wrong. I looked it up. So I stirred myself again a little bit more firmly. Again, I'm going to ask you to be respectful. We are here to help you not be abused. And lo and behold, so okay, sorry, anyway. And at this point, it looks like we're in the clear. We start, talk we start talking about his issue. I'm looking for the solution. I start asking him some questions. And then like five minutes later, he gets combative again. He stops 
answering my questions, and he insists that he's answered everything that he did, he's needed to, and he doesn't understand why I don't get it. So, I have to go serve myself again. Here we go. Ahead. Before you call me a moron, too, has it occurred to you that you're not being as clear as you might think? <laughs> Back and forth a few more times, me asking him the questions that I need to fix his problem, and him refusing. Finally, we can keep going back and forth, or we can just answer my questions. Only one of these options will allow me to help you. And, lo and behold, oops. <laughs> it's a cliffhanger. Come back next year. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> maybe you should have uh, stayed around the state. What did I do? <laughs> We're going to go. Yeah. Okay. I guess, I guess you get to go through this again. By the way, I have fat thumbs, and these are really small buttons. So, I'm going to play with the clicker. Okay. Uh, ready now? I'm being such a troll, I'm sorry, I'll allow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he actually said this. See, the guy actually said this. So, as you, this is how you can figure out what level the user is at. Now, this one, he was not quite at level two, and that's why he did back down a little bit easier. So that takes us now to the tricky part. What if the user is at level two? We've been firm several times, not backing <laughs> off. They're still attacking us, maybe even being abusive. What do we do then? All right, so now I'm going to go over four tips, four strategies that we can use to deal with a level two angry user. Uh, these strategies are a combination of asserting ourselves and empathy, and they're not in any particular order. As long as our goal is to connect with the user, then we just have to use our best judgment on when one strategy is appropriate. Okay, so let's start with assertion. Point out inappropriate behaviors, but avoid making judgments against the other person. So, what if we said this? If you continue to be difficult, then I can't help you. Now this is not good. And the reason it's not good is because we aren't addressing anything they're actually doing, we're just insulting them and calling them difficult. Instead, we say, if you continue to curse at me, then I can't help you. All right, so now we're talking about something specific that they're doing, and we're asking them to change that. Now, this one can actually be a little bit tricky sometimes. So here's a simple litmus test that you are ever in doubt. Are we calling out something they do or something they are? Something they do, that can be changed if they're cursing at us. Something they are, if they're just a difficult person, that can't be changed, so it's unproductive to bring up or bring up. And by the way, this one right here, not just for customer service. In fact, <laughs> if you ever get in an argument with a significant other, I want you to remember this one, okay? Because, think about this, I want you to take this concept that I just went over and apply it to that very, very common accusation. Why are you being so crazy? All right? So building on that, when making a request, address a specific action. Don't be vague. So what if we said this? Please calm down. I hope you all realize that this is a horrible, horrible thing to say to someone who's upset. If you want me to, need, uh, to help you, I need you to listen to me. Now this one is actually pretty bad too. And the reason both of these are bad is because they are accusatory and they're easily denied. The other person can just say, well, I am calm, or I am listening to you. Even if we know for a fact that they are not, we can't prove it, so it's not productive. Instead, we say, when I ask you to check your site on another browser, please do so. That is how I can investigate your issue. And so again, be specific with your request. Now, unfortunately, sometimes we can be very specific with our requests, but still met with resistance. And the user just doesn't want to help us, and they just don't want to answer our questions. So at that point, we may have to decide that we need to switch to empathy. So. Reflect back the user's frustrated comments. And this one is pretty well. But what if we said, I understand, or I understand you're frustrated. But these are actually kind of worthless. Like these two right here, they're empty because like, they just they don't mean anything. So instead we say, I can tell you're feeling frustrated that your homepage isn't displaying properly. So now we're making it clear to them that we are listening to them and we understand why they're frustrated. Um, of course, with this one though, there is a big caveat. <clears throat> Don't overdo this one because it can start to sound like we're mocking them. If we're just repeating everything back to them, then they're going to be suspicious. Again, the goal is to validate.
validate their feelings and let them know that we understand, but also be sincere, or pretend to be sincere, make it <laughs> Last one, keep empathy and solutions separate. Okay, so what if we said this? What well, sorry, what if the user says this? I'm feeling so frustrated with your software. Well, we get that a lot, right? Or hopefully it's not just us. <laughs> so we say, I understand your frustration. We do offer quite a bit of custom customization, so if you tell me what you're having issues with, I'm happy to help. Now, for the record, there's nothing wrong with this comment. And chances are we probably will say it at some point during the conversation. It's just that if they're at level two angry, this is going to sound like an excuse. It's not an explanation. So we say, I'm sorry, I'm really sorry to hear that. Is there anything I can do to help you feel less frustrated? Empathy only, we're not offering empathy. Solution or explanations when the user is ready for solutions. And if we focus on empathy for now, then what's going to happen is that hopefully, after a little while, we'll notice that they start to become less aggressive and less angry and start backing off a little bit. And they become more receptive to the suggestions or the questions that we're asking. And that's when we can switch to trying to find a solution for them. And so, to summarize these are the four steps that we can do to deal with that uh, level two angry user. As you can see, it's um, gradual, wary, that's met with resistance, we may need to assert ourselves. And then, if that doesn't work, maybe we need to focus on empathy for a little while. We stay on empathy for a little while, and then they start to get a little bit more receptive to us, so we go back to finding solutions, but then, Something else happens and they blow up again, so we might need to assert ourselves again or switch to empathy, and so on and so forth, back and forth, until we get to the point where we, we can give them the solution that they're looking for. And that's how we attain our goal. Uh, we empathize with the, our users. We give them a chance to care about us. That's important too. And that allows us to reach a happy compromise for all involved. Okay. And that's it. So, as you can see, or well, hopefully you can see now, um, a lot of these techniques I just talked about, they're not just for customer service. They're just good communication skills. And um, if you apply these techniques to your everyday interactions, I definitely think that it will help you to be a more effective communicator with uh, your peers, or significant others, or bosses, friends, enemies, whatever. And finally, if you enjoyed this talk and would like more information on it, here are four books that I do recommend. Uh, for the record, these four books are not customer service books. If you look at them, uh, some of you may know them. These are books on uh, social dynamics, psychology, communication skills, not customer service. However, if you apply <laughs> these concepts to customer service and your everyday life, then I think you'll find them very useful. Um, you don't have to memorize the titles of the books. I put them on my personal blog. DennisHHong.com slash userconf. Now please keep in mind it's Dennis H. Hong, it's two H's in my name. So if you want that and plus uh, a bunch more resources that I put on that page, check it out and uh, let me know if you have any questions, leave a comment or say you suck if you have to. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs>